Welcome back. In this section, I want to talk a little bit about lipid metabolism. Protein metabolism is pretty easy to understand. We're going to start with a polymer, break it down into monomers, and you know, and from there it can go into the bloodstream. Glucose, once again, start with a polymer, break it down into monomer, from there it can go into the bloodstream. Lipids, however, they're a little bit more complicated as well as the processing, not only that's happening in the digestive system where it can't go into the bloodstream because lipids and watery bloodstream don't mix. So it has to go into the lacteals for the lymphatic system, but also once they're dumped from the lymphatics back into the blood, what happens to those lipids in your body? And this is some really interesting stuff and it relates to you and your body as you age with atherosclerosis and other things affecting your lifespan. So let's get started. So as I said, lipids won't dissolve in plasma. Yeah, there's no emulsification that's going to happen. So in order to be carried, they have to form a complex with proteins, which are called lipoproteins. And so when you look at lipoproteins, and this is just kind of a generic lipoprotein, it has a center core where the lipids are. And the lipids can be triglycerides, cholesterol, a combination of the two of them, or just one, or you know, mostly one or the other one. And that is going to help determine what type of lipoprotein we have. Now, surrounding that lipid core, we are going to have phospholipids so that we can have the little tails next to the lipids, next to lipids, and they're happy. And then the hydrophilic heads on the outside so it can be carried in the watery plasma environment. Now, in addition to this phospholipid coating, we are going to have proteins that can attach to the surface. And these proteins are called apolipoproteins, just a really long name for proteins on the surface. So let's get started and learn about this lipoprotein metabolism. So there's four different types of lipoproteins. And if you kind of understand how the first one is formed, then you can figure out how all four of them are formed. So the first one is called the chylomicron. And chylomicrons are what are actually going to be made in the intestinal cell. So the lipid has to get broken down to enter the intestinal cell. And then we have to put parts of it back together to form the chylomicron before it can travel into the lacteal. And when we look at the lipoprotein that is a chylomicron and we look at its core, if you look in this picture down here, the blue is the phospholipid membrane on the outside. And on this one, you can see the core is being represented as about 90% green. And that's because chylomicrons are about 90% triglyceride with just a scattering of cholesterol molecules. And so this is what is formed in those enterocytes, in those intestinal wall cells of the small intestine. From there, it's going to travel into the bloodstream and then in the blood vessel walls and forming atherosclerosis, it's going to get broken down where you're going to have triglycerides and free fatty acids and you can have foam cells and smooth muscle coming on and the whole atherosclerotic process can start. But assuming that's not happening, what is going to happen to the chylomicron is it's going to travel into the, the liver. When it hits the liver, a couple of things happen. The first thing that you should notice is looking at the picture is that the core has changed. It is no longer 90% triglyceride. It has picked up a bunch of cholesterol. It still is over 50% triglycerides though, but it has a significant amount of cholesterol in it. And in addition, it's picked up just a little bit of more protein on the outer surface. And this lipoprotein is now known as a VLDL or very low density lipoprotein. Now this VLDL is going to be transported to adipose tissue where it can be stored and further modifications will occur. And so what happens is when you look at this picture, the first thing you notice is shazam, it has turned yellow with just a smattering of green. So in adipose tissue, the triglycerides are removed from the VLDL and 
the core is now more than 50% cholesterol in this picture. You can see that the core is probably 75, 80% cholesterol. So if cholesterol is needed by cells, for instance, we need to make steroid hormones or we need to have cholesterol in our plasma membranes, then this can travel to the required place, be absorbed, be broken down, and now you have cholesterol available for use. So uh, the other thing I want you to know, besides the core changing from majority triglyceride to majority cholesterol, is that it has picked up more protein on the surface. Now, this lipoprotein, the LDL, gets a bad name and justifiably slow. This is the lousy lipoprotein. It's the one you want to have low levels of. What you want to have happen is that these LDLs get transformed into the fourth and final type of lipoprotein known as a high density lipoprotein. In the high density lipoprotein, yes, we still have cholesterol mostly in the core, but we have picked up tons of protein on the outer coat, making a nice shell so this cholesterol stuff can't do bad things to your body. Okay. And what this shell does is as the HDL travels through your body, it's picking up additional cholesterol wherever it is. You got some cholesterol here, let me take it from you so you won't have cholesterol damage over there. So all this cholesterol and lipids being picked up from all these tissues. And then the HDL actually travels all the way back to the liver where the liver removes this cholesterol and dumps it into your bile. And so this helps protect your body from the effects of cholesterol. Thereby, HDL is known as the good cholesterol. And by the way, super important for majors taking this course, the easiest way to increase your HDL levels is exercise. And I don't mean you have to exercise an hour a day, but just 10 to 15 minutes of, you know, a moderate walk will increase these HDL levels, thereby increasing your good cholesterol and decreasing your bad cholesterol. All right, so now I hope that these four types of lipoproteins are not nearly as scary as they were before, and you understand the processing that goes on in our body. I wanna thank you once again for all your hard work in this class. We really, really do appreciate it. And I will see you shortly in class. Thank you.